Hey, so if you are getting ready for your IB psychology exam, you might be thinking what the heck is going to be on the exam and you might be a little bit worried. So in this video, I am going to tell you the five types of questions to expect and how to prepare for them. So here they are, variables and behavior, models or theories, research related to a particular topic, research methods and ethical considerations. All IB psychology exam questions will fit under one of these five categories. So when you're preparing, um, this is what you want to focus on. Why does this matter? Why do we care about this? Why am I telling you this? Well, first of all, if you know what to expect, then you know how to prepare, right? And it's going to take away some of the, the nerves of getting ready for the IB psychology exam. And the other thing we're going to look at is all of these five types of questions can actually be answered with a similar structure. And that's going to be really helpful as well. It's just going to simplify things and it's going to allow you to, to stop worrying about command terms and all these other um, annoying factors and just get down to showing what a good psychologist you are, which really is the purpose of the exams. Where um, examiners are assessing your skills as a psychologist, right? And that's what you want to showcase in your answer. So let's look at the first type, variables and behavior. Uh, what you're really going to be explaining here is, um, or the question is going to be asking you to show how a variable affects a particular behavior. It could be how a variable affects cognition. So in the biological approach, neurotransmission genetics, um, those sorts of things. In the social cultural approach, we're looking at social and cultural factors. Uh, in the cognitive approach, there's the example of emotion. Uh, the question might be, uh, instead of focusing on the variable, it might be focusing on a specific behavior, like prejudice and discrimination. Right? Explain this. Why does it happen? Relationships, biocentrism. What are the fa factors that uh, affect these behaviors. In other words, how do we explain them? And generally speaking, the uh, paper one is going to um, could identify the variable, like like in the biological and social cultural factors. They typically identify the variable. That's what the topic is. And paper two identifies the behavior, which is why hopefully you can see and this is more for teachers, why combining paper one and two uh, in your course makes sense instead of preparing paper for paper one and then preparing for paper two, you can combine them. This could be an exam question. To what extent do genes influence human behavior? So you have to explain how do genes influence behavior? Where's the evidence? To what extent you're going to uh, counter argue that? Well, actually, you know, what are the um, what are the counter arguments? Models or theories. This is another type that you might get. Uh, models like, um, oh, sorry. So you might have the theory. Uh, you're going to have to summarize how the theory explains the origin of a particular behavior. Like social identity theory, how does this explain intergroup conflict? How does social cognitive theory explain behavior? If you're given a model, uh, a model explains how a phenomenon works, right? The processes or the steps in a particular um, phenomenon or behavior or explanation, and you need to summarize that. That's where you're having to show you understand. So, for example, the working memory model or the multi store model. So, that's the second type. Uh, and yeah, so this could be a research question, uh, sorry, uh, exam question. Discuss social identity theory. Research related to, now this is a bit of a cop out, it's a bit of a cheats type of question uh, in the exam. Sorry about that. Um, and really what you're, you're doing is you're, you're explaining how the research is related to a particular topic. This is usually in topics where the core concept isn't very well defined in the guide. Um, the topic, it could be a particular theory, it might be an explanation of something, it could be a behavior itself like, um, yeah, uh, for example, bystanderism or pro-social behavior, it could be hormones and behavior explanation, it could be a theory like social identity theory. So, for example, you might be asked to evaluate one theory or study related to bystanderism. And you usually get asked these questions in the exam when there's just like a one word heading and we don't really know what we have to understand about that concept. So bystanderism in the guide is just one word, bystanderism. So what do we have to know about bystanderism? It's not clear, so they're probably going to ask a question like this. All right, fourth type, and this is one of the harder ones, research methods. You have to explain how and why the method is used. I'm also putting under here techniques uh, in the biological approach. You have to understand one or more technological techniques used to study the brain and behavior. Um, it can be answered in the same way. So experiments and case studies are the methods uh, that I would, I would, these are examples and they are the ones that I would focus on. Um, and technology for the biological approach. Again, fMRI, MRI, not a research method. According to the IB, they're a technique. So don't write about them as if they were research methods. Talk about case studies, experiments, or correlational studies if asked about research methods. Uh, and so, for example, in paper two, uh, you might be asked to discuss the use of one research method used to study human relationships. Now, the hardest type of question I think to answer is the fifth topic, ethical considerations. 
uh, you have to explain what are the considerations related to particular topics like studying the brain and behavior, genetics, or culture. Higher level students will have to understand ethical considerations related to animal research. Um, treating disorders is another example could be in paper two where you have to explain ethical considerations. So a short answer question in paper one might be explain one ethical consideration in studies on genes and behavior. Right? So they are the five types, variables and behavior, models or theories, research related to a particular topic, research methods, and ethical considerations. So all YB psychology exams can be um, lumped into one of these five types. Now. How can we answer any short answer question? I'll make some later videos that will go more into more detail in, in um, answering short answer questions and essay questions. But basically, here's my advice. After your introduction, explain the topic. Right? Um, show you understand the topic in the question. Uh, so for example, if it's about variables and behavior, explain how the variable affects the behavior. Uh, if it's about a research method, explain how and why it was used. Ethical consideration, why is it relevant? Um, a model theory, what is a model theory? So explain the topic and then get into the supporting evidence. Most students jump straight into the study. They think that IB psychology is all about the studies and study, 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 one study showed. Explain the topic first. The topics are there to teach you about psychology. The studies are there so you know how we know about that topic. And so I would have it in that order in your answer. All right, so let's have a look at this one. If this was a question, outline how one neurotransmitter affects behavior. Most students are gonna jump straight into describing the study, and I advise against that. I say start with the central argument that explains the topic. So in, in my course, um, in my book, I look at how serotonin may affect aggression, right? And we're looking at this through low serotonin reduces function of PFC, which means we may not be able to inhibit our impulsive reaction. So if someone threatens us, and um, we have low serotonin, we have a poor function of prefrontal cortex, so we may not be able to inhibit an impulse and think through our decisions, because that's what our prefrontal cortex helps us to do, so we may react aggressively. Right. That's the explanation. That's going to show you, under, this, this topic is asking you to show that you understand neurotransmission, how it affects behavior. So focus on that. Have that as your central argument and then get into the study. How do I know that? I know that because we can look at this one example of Passamoni's research where they reduced the serotonin levels by reducing the tryptophan availability and that affected function of the prefrontal cortex in the amygdala when they were exposed with threatening faces. So, short answer question, central argument first, followed by the study. Um, so, yeah. So when it comes to revising, how do you prepare for your exam? For each topic, I would be figuring out what is your central argument going to be. And this is where your teacher can come, become really helpful. Um, this is also where we have the Facebook groups and the blog, uh, where you can post questions even in the comments. We can help you out as well if you're not sure what your central argument should be for each topic. But first, port of call for you should be, uh, for a student, go to your teacher. For teachers, um, figure out uh, when you're, you know, you're teaching the, the course, what is the central argument for each. Um, you know, what's the key thing you're going to show you understand? And then revise how the studies support the argument. A lot of students, when they're writing about studies, they'll say, here's the aims, methods, results, full stop, finish. They never link the results and explain them back to how they support the argument that has just been explained, and that's really key. Those two to three sentences uh, make a big difference. Um, so if we have a look, look at this example in bystanderism from human relationships in paper two, right? My central argument, well, how do the factors influence bystanderism? You know, I might be explaining um, how diffusion of responsibility could lead to uh, bystanderism. Then I'm going to look at how this might be shown in studies, um, correlational studies like Levine's and studies like the Smoky Room study. And then I might have, if it's an essay, I need to have some um, critical thinking here, some counter arguments. So then I'll look at limitations of my explanations, limitations of the studies, what are the alternative explanations, right? Um, so that's, I would have having to be revising those three things as I get ready for the exam for each topic. So a couple more tips for teachers, and these are just things I've done over the years that I think uh, um, have helped me out and helped my students. You've got five types of questions. I would focus on one type per unit. So your summative assessment um, for the unit, if it's a short answer response test or an essay test, I would uh, teach students how to uh, tell them what the type of question is going to be and give some examples and teach them how to answer that style of question and do that once per unit. So by the time you get through the end of the course, they've had a go at practicing all five. And this is going to allow you to have some really targeted feedback each unit um, based on the, the type of question answered and it's going to make your, your feedback to the whole class easier when you're grading a class set of essays you know you can um, be going you're going to be the students are going to be making similar mistakes because it's a similar type of question so your feedback can be much more um, it can be easier to, to give that feedback and it will be more effective 
I would also begin the course with looking at the variables and behavior type of question because this is the fundamental question that we're looking at in psychology. As psychologists, we're trying to explain behavior. How and why do people do and think the things they do? And that's all about variables and behavior. So I would begin with that one. And uh, I would also focus on one essay command term per unit. So I begin with to what extent, and then lay, uh, the next one I look at is discuss, and then I look at evaluate, and I look at um, finally the contrast. So I think I think that's a good way to do it as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I hope that was helpful. Um, knowing those five types of exam questions. Um, if you more information, if you've got more questions, you know, subscribe to our blog, post a question on one of our Facebook groups, um, or you can go and check out our store. Uh, you might find some more helpful stuff there. So, yeah, good luck. Hope that helped.